episode, Harold gives a drive-by science lesson, Bill has a cold can of pop, and I turn a car into a bicycle. <laughs> Here's the man I call uncle, my uncle, husband to the woman I call aunt, and favorite and only brother to the man I call dad. Here he is, Fred Green! <laughs> Welcome uh, all of you to the show. Uh, how are you today, Harold? <laughs> Ever excellent, as always. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. You don't get sick, do you, Harold? You're more of a carrier. <laughs> I'm not just a carrier. I'm a laser transporter. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've been having a bit of fun uh, this week up at the lodge. Uh, the guys are uh, looking at some of that uh, bungee jumping, you know, where they uh, tie a big jock strap on your ankle and heave you off a bridge, you know? <laughs> And then the blood all rushes to your head and you damn near kill yourself and makes you feel young again, apparently. You know, actually, that bungee jumping is not safe and it's been banned in a lot of areas. Cement areas, I think. <laughs> well, of course, you know, we can't afford the real official uh, bungee jumping gear or anything, but Junior Sinkman got the idea that if you climb to the top of a real springy tree, like... You know, a will or something, you know. And you say you tie your foot off to the top branch and you just die. It's got to be the same effect, really, you know. <laughs> you know, you got to be a pretty good idiot to do that. <laughs> well, thanks for volunteering, Harold. <laughs> But we got a whole lineup of guys ahead of you. In fact, uh, they're waiting for this rope, so maybe we should uh, get on with the show. Oh, yeah, okay, sure, excellent. <laughs> because we have a superiorly excellent show for you this evening. <laughs> Pretty much the same as all the others, as far as I know. He has no understanding of the television business. Obviously. I often look back as I get older at the fun we had with Murphy's Boulder. It was six feet across, must have weighed nine tons, round and smooth as a baby's bun. We leave messages on it and lean against it. It was like a friend who was solid and true. Then after dark, we roll it into the lake and watch boats smack into it really, really hard. Oh, that's good now. This week on uh, Handyman Corner, we're gonna show you something that you can do with that old wreck of a car that you may have sitting out on your front lawn, say, or perhaps wedged into the garden shed. Now, up here at the lodge, of course, uh, when a car gets too dangerous to drive, we just sell it to another member. <laughs> but what do you do when a car literally falls to pieces? Sell it as a kit car? people would uh, see this big pile of crap and figure, well, this is no longer a viable means of transportation. But a lot of people are not me. <laughs> I look at this stuff. And I say, with a little elbow grease and some imagination, I can build myself a free 10-speed bicycle. If the motor hadn't seized up, I could build a moped. <laughs> All right. The first thing you need to make yourself a two-wheeled bicycle, of course, is two wheels. Uh, I got four to choose from, so I threw the two ugly ones away, and I got Harold's toothbrush and cleaned all the roadkill out of the treads of these. <laughs> you want to make sure that there's uh, no leaks in these things, so uh, what you do is you take the tire and just stick her down into a, into a bucket of water and watch for uh, the bubbles coming to the surface, sort of like uh, old man Sedgwick in Possum Lake. <laughs> you just put that down there, easy as pie. Oh, it's a little small for the... <laughs> All right, uh, well, we'll assume there. there's no leaks there. Now I'm going to need to make a uh, frame for the bicycle. My golly, this will work right here. The exhaust system out of the unit. That should be right. That should be fine. Uh, 
Oh, no wonder gas stations are so messy. <laughs> All right, uh, take a hacksaw, and you want to start uh, hacking this thing up, uh, you'll need uh, three two-foot lengths and two three-foot lengths. So that's three twos and two threes, uh, which is a full house, I believe. <laughs> oh, golly. Boy, uh, hacksaws are fragile things, aren't they? <laughs> All right, so uh, once you got your pipe cut, uh, you, you've got enough pieces now to start building your frame. You know, you might just want to file those edges a little smoother, especially if you ride a bike in shorts. <laughs> now, to put all the pieces together, you can use stove bolts, or uh, you could use a welding torch, or you could use, that's right, the handyman's secret weapon, duct tape. <laughs> Another roll there, Harold. And uh, there you have it. And if that isn't a real uh, head turner of a bicycle frame, I don't know what is. <laughs> now, this muffler is a dandy place to hold water for you long distance riders who can't hold your water. <laughs> and uh, you're probably thinking to yourself, uh, what am I going to use for pedals? Ah, here we go, here we go. How about uh, window winders? <laughs> and then uh, for a chain, now, how much of it? Oh, here we go, here we are. We'll just uh, run a fan belt uh, from the pulley up to another pulley, and there we go there. And as far as uh, the gears go and whatever, ah, cars are full of gears. Gears everywhere in a car, that's not going to be a problem. You see, the secret is to make do with what you have. This is not just recycling, it's bicycling. <laughs> so uh, I'll get this all rigged together, but it's going to take a little while. Uh, why don't you go back to the show, and when I got her all done, I'll have you come back in here and I guess do a little show and off. <laughs> And now it's that part of the show where we expose the three little words that men find so hard to say, I don't know. <laughs> and here now is the expert, my Uncle Red, and of course, his good friend, oh, Mr. Hap Shaughnessy, local fisherman and raconteur. <laughs> all righty. Dear experts, there's a guy at work that drives us all crazy. Whenever he tells you something, it's so full of lies and exaggerations that you can't believe any of it. What's with this guy? Well, half this sounds like it's more in your area. <laughs> well, it's a self-confidence problem, isn't it? Um, people uh, who stretch the truth, generally trying to make themselves more important than they really are, uh, just to make up for their poor self-image. That's very insightful. Yeah, that's what Sigmund Freud told me. <laughs> What's the very worst bragger and boaster that I ever met was on one of our climbs up Everest. <laughs> we had seven attempts. All of them were successful. But you should have heard this guy and the stories that came out of his mouth. Space expedition. Running the two-minute mile. Playing billiards with the Pope. I happen to know the Pope only plays stripes and solids. <laughs> But this guy got to me so much, I had to leave the tent. I had to get out of there and sleep on the glacier. Better to risk another encounter with the abominable snowman than spend any more time with this man. Yeah, I know where you're coming from there, huh? <laughs> but of course, I didn't expect the avalanche. 350,000 tons of snow cleaved off that mountain and landed right on my knee. <laughs> the bad knee. <laughs> well, I wanted to scream, but uh, some of the crew were still sleeping, so I quietly just tried to dig myself out a bit. And after a few hours, I came upon this guy, this same guy, lying there, unconscious, his head stuck in an ice crevice. And I had a seven-pound pick with me, and I could have chipped him out, but I couldn't guarantee he'd still have ears. <laughs> right now, I would envy someone without ears. <laughs> So, I tried this little trick that I learned during the war from de Gaulle. I, uh, I melted the guy out of there. You know, with a pot of hot coffee and a turkey baster. 